Okay, so this session is a workshop, so we're gonna actively be doing things. Um, the slides for this are live. You can look at them uh, right now on your own computer, which may uh, help if you're having trouble uh, viewing up here on the screen. Uh, you can make them as big or as small as you want on your own computer. Uh, and the URL for that is tinyurl.com slash fvgit, Fox Valley Git. Um, and uh, if you are experienced with Git, you can stay here and help somebody else who's new. That would be much appreciated. Um, if you know absolutely nothing about Git, you are in exactly the right spot. So uh, we're going to start with just the basics uh, and we're going to get you actually doing things so you can remember them uh, and use them after the talk. Uh, my name is Kathy Faze. I'm YesCT on Twitter and also Drupal.org. I work for Black Mesh and my job for them is um, community liaison. So what I actually do with my days is uh, I go to Drupal events and I talk to people there. I um, sprint when I'm in events. I work on issues. I especially like to work on Drupal 8 issues and uh, my favorite ones of those are the multilingual ones. Uh, and um, because Oh, oh, and then there's another component to my job, which is um, in general, kind of like paying attention to the community. So I'm also on like the Drupal software working group, which is um, uh, tries to think about how to make the Drupal community better, uh, what changes we can make to our software that will help our community uh, be more efficient and grow and, and all kinds of things like that. So I also think about like community processes um, and I, because I do that and I work on issues in the issue queue, uh, I use Git a lot uh, all the time, but in a very kind of limited way. Uh, so it's mostly uh, revolving around the issue queue workflow and the Git things that are really good for that. Um, using Git in a team, a uh, collaborative team at work, uh, working on different features that have to be merged together, uh, is a slightly different skill set than I have a lot of experience with. So um, if you have any questions or you want to talk about those things, like definitely ask them, but I may have to defer to somebody else who might have a better answer than me. Uh, but we'll try and find answers to things. Uh, this talk is a version of a beginner Git uh, workshop talk that uh, Fury has given multiple times at uh, New York City camp, nice camp, and um, the uh, source for the slides is available on my uh, GitHub uh, account. So if you want to uh, reuse this talk and give it at another camp, this is definitely that kind of talk. Like we can share it and reproduce it and uh, do it in lots of different places. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, version control. Uh, we're gonna get set up with Git. We're gonna do the basic commands. Um, we're going to talk about how to undo things, experiment with code, and uh, figure out who to blame when things are wrong, and go through a couple of different workflows. Uh, we are not actually going to use GitHub itself, uh, and uh, this is just a beginning bit. Uh, but there'll be links in the slides to get more information. So um, I've been programming for a really long time and way back when my version control was um, like tarring up something making, uh, renaming the folder that I was working at with a, a date or a word on it that would remind me about what was working or what was broken, and then untarring uh, to get back my place where I was working again. And so I had a lot of different copies of things and they all were organized by date or how they were broken or things like that. Version control is um, different. 
it's much more organized, systematic, and when you build a set of tools around it, it allows you to be, like, do amazing uh, things. Um, I find, um, I prefer to do anything that I'm doing under version control, especially a collaborative work I really like to do with Git. So uh, authors will use this, um, and I use it all the time for my talks. Uh, slides, especially if I'm giving a talk with another person. It's very hard to coordinate work with somebody else when you're um, both working on a presentation in Keynote. Right? Like, how do you, would you pass the file back and forth and then you change something and they change something and then you don't know what they changed and you lose somebody's changes and uh, you can't work on something because somebody else said they're going to work on it for the next hour and then you have to wait. Like, it's just, what a mess, right? But when you collaboratively work together using Git, you can absolutely work on things at the same time. Changes don't get lost. Uh, it's really easy to review changes. It's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, and it will make your life suck less. Um, well, because everybody's doing it is why we're going to use Git. Right? Like, um, it's the thing people are moving to, it's the thing people are already using, uh, and it's awesome. So, we want to actually do it. Uh, so, whatever computer you're on, right, make sure you have your command line tool open. So, um, I, I have a Mac, uh, and so I have a terminal open. Uh, you have one already built in. It's in your um, applications folder in the utility folder. And uh, so you just want to start a terminal window if you're on a Mac. Uh, if you're on Windows, um, you're probably going to get um, uh, the git bash will be like your shell environment. Uh, so let's make sure everybody has that. And then what you should be able to do is you should be able to type git and something should happen. Um, so let's just check and see if the person next to you can actually do this. Um, the talk will be less fun if you can't. So it'd be worth spending five minutes to make sure that people are set up to, to have work. It's just get dash scm.com. Oh, why, that's not getting bigger. That's not helpful. Uh, and then also, um, 
Remember that the, there's a tiny URL for the talk, tinyurl.com tiny slash uh, FV Git, Fox Valley Git, is these exact slides. And you can open them up in your browser. Uh, and that way, like if you need to go back and look at a slide a little longer or you want to peek ahead, you can do that. All right, so people are downloading, so we're going to wait a few minutes um, for that. Let's see. What can we do while we wait? <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Um, so let's talk about Drupal.org. Um, you should have a Drupal.org account. If you don't, please get one. Um, uh, I use Drupal.org in two ways. I uh, memorize URLs that I go to, or I use Google, and I, usually, I search for whatever I want and put the word Drupal in there. Um, so on any uh, module, theme, project, uh, distribution, you can go to Drupal.org slash project slash whatever. Uh, and you get uh, to that project page. So I'm pretty sure uh, project slash Drupal will get me there. Uh, so project pages will, uh, will look like this. And one of the important bits here is this version control tab. And you pick which version of the project you like. Uh, so if you're working on core, you're going to work on 8.0.x uh, is what we're working on right now. Uh, if you want, you can change this to some other version. So you could work on 7. Uh, and then you, there's a button uh, which, you can, which will refresh the page and update the command for how you get the code through Git. Uh, so this works on any kind of project at all. Um, and then when you have the code, you get the Git repository with the code. Uh, so if I'm going to work on uh, fixing something in a project, I always use uh, this and not the tarball on the front of the project page. Uh, so that's something to note. This is super easy, um, but it's a little bit more hidden than the tar. Yeah. Uh, if, I get, if I get the tar, I don't have any Git history. Uh, so if I want to see what the commits were, if I want to see who worked on it, um, if I want to um, make a change myself and submit a patch, the way I create a patch is with a Git workflow. So I would have to like download the tarball and get in it, it. I'd have to turn it into a Git repository. Uh, and then make my changes and then do it. So I might as well just have a Git repository right from the start. Um, the other reason why this is uh, super great is because if I use this, instead of 
turning the tarball into my own Git repository, what I can do with this is I can pull any recent changes really quickly when I have this, because my origin is all set up to talk to Drupal.org. So if I'm working on something and um, that day three fixes go in, I don't have to get a new tarball or try and figure out what they were doing. I can just do a git pull and it goes out and talks to the server and brings in those changes. It also means that it's really fast for any subsequent downloads. So for example, Drupal 8 core is big. And to get a copy of that today, and I know people are going to fix things tomorrow, if I got the tarball every time, I'd be downloading the whole tarball every time I needed to get like an update for it. <laughs> if I do the git clone, I only get the changes to it. So it's much faster and much less internet traffic um, to get the whole entire updated thing. I just need like those few little lines that have changed, and then I get that. So that's why I use that. That would be amazing. Uh, yes. Uh, I would encourage everybody to uh, get the 8.0.x branch of Drupal core. Uh, and if you want to do that, like, maybe not everybody right now, because, you know, internet. Um, but, you know, if you find yourself, you know, n not thoroughly confused and with a few extra brain cycles somewhere during this talk, during this day, I would encourage everybody to get clone uh, Drupal 8 head, and we can do a really cool things once you do that. If you if you can do it, you know, like in here, yeah. I'm kind of hoping maybe at the end uh, of the talk, what we'll do is uh, actually show you like how to use Git to work on an issue. Uh, but it'll be a while before we get to that, so you have plenty of time to disperse your downloading a little bit. We can stagger them. Uh, all right, so what we want to make sure is that um, you have a command line tool where you can type git and things happen. Uh, if you don't, please, people are really nice and understanding. Just go sit next to somebody with a computer. If somebody's sitting next to you, let them sometimes type commands. Okay, so like you could share the computer, like, like pick it up and push it over a little bit and let their fingers touch the keyboard. Yes, mom. <laughs> Very important. Uh, all right. Uh, so if uh, if it's your computer, <laughs> let's do uh, let's do these things first. Uh, so if you've never set up Git before, uh, you need to tell it a little bit about yourself. So we want to run a Git config. Um, you give it the minus minus global option, and it will um, store these in one place. So any um, Git repository that you set up, you won't have to do this every time. Uh, and you want to tell it your name and your email address, and just for kicks, also um, set the safe uh, carriage return line feed thing to true. Um, so you can copy and paste these um, out of the slides if you have them open on your computer. Ha! <laughs> Very cool. Uh, I'm quite often teaching um, people how to program, uh, how to do Drupal, and um, sometimes these people are not technical at all and they've never done anything like this before. And I find it um, very, f I 
they view it very freeing sometimes to sit next to me while I um, work and they'll ask me questions and I'll try and tell them the answer because the answer is usually like, I don't know and let's Google that. Um, because they think people who are new to something think that people who've been doing it for a while like have this intrinsic knowledge in their brain about how things work and how you do things and really we just know how to use Google. Um, so uh, after, this is, um, I was like, you know, I'm having you run these commands to set up your username and it's, I know it's going to create a global config file for you. I know where my global config file is. Mine is in tilde slash dot git config, right? But I'm like, well, git's got to be smart enough to be able to actually tell you where it puts the global thing, right? So I Googled it and it turns out um, if you do, uh, let's try it, uh, git config minus minus global minus minus list, uh, those are all the things, but does it tell you where it is? Oh, I thought it would tell you where it was. Let's try the minus minus edit. Ah, well you're, so um, it opened it up in my editor and on the command line my editor is VI. If you accidentally get thrown into VI, the way to get out is to hit a colon little Q. Um, and if that doesn't work, hit sh escape a couple times and then try again, colon, little q. Um, so I can see my editor is telling me where my uh, git config file is. So you can, uh, with git, you can either use the command line to set up configuration things or you can edit them directly in the file. So that's kind of helpful. All right. So now let's do some things. Um, so first thing uh, is we're going to make a new uh, project. So I'm just going to run CD, which takes me to my home level, wherever I am, it just takes me back home. Uh, and then I'm going to make a directory, I'm going to call it Fox Valley Talk. Uh, and then I'm going to change directory into that directory. And that's, um, so I'm going to CD into the thing that I just created. Uh, and um, Unix and the command line and Git have a lot of similarities. When you're confused in Unix, um, the thing to do is to do print working directory, PWD, uh, and LS. And so whenever you get confused, always try those two things. It's like, where am I and what is here? So LS lists things and PWD prints where you are. Uh, Git has very similar things, like you'll be doing stuff in Git and you'll be like, I'm confused, and so I'll tell you the Git things to do. Uh, so you should be in that directory that you just made, uh, and now we need to tell Git that we want it to start paying attention to this, so we're gonna do Git init. And it'll initialize things, it makes a .git directory and it stores all its stuff in there. After that, you're gonna run git status. And this is the equivalent of a print working directory or an ls for git. Whenever you get confused and you don't know what to do, you just run git status. Uh, so if, um, if anybody is a little bit confused or you're having a little bit of trouble, try asking the person next to you and if, um, if the two of you uh, can't figure out like in a minute, I don't want anybody to get left behind, please raise your hand because I know there are people in this room who are just in here to like walk around and help. Uh, so just like wave your hand and be like, I, I can't do what you just told me to do and I don't know why and we'll work it out together. Uh, so some people are still going through this commands and that's really totally fine. Some people are already done with that. So some extra bonus stuff that won't interfere because don't feel like you're missing it if you're thinking about something else. But if you're a little bit bored, um, some bonus things. Uh, if you type history, 
on the user's command line, you will get a history of all the commands that you've typed along with a number for that command. Uh, this is a really great way to automatically make notes uh, because you can run history and then you can redirect it into a file. So you could redirect it into tilde.notes.txt or something. And you can do this at the end of a session. So maybe you and somebody else are working together in a project and you want to remember the things that you did, the Unix commands that you typed for later. Uh, you can just type history on the Unix command line and it, you actually get them. And you can save things, output from Unix into files just by what's called redirecting, which is this little um, arrow thingy. So we want to make sure that people are in a directory that they made. Uh, so let's just double check, try and make sure when you do print working directory, it should tell you where you are and it should have like a name of a directory at the end of that that you created. Uh, and you should be able to run git status and it will tell you something like um, that you're on the master branch and that there's nothing, anything new. Yes, so it, um, yes, which, you need help. Doug's going to come over there and help. <laughs> uh, other cool thingamabobbers you can do, depending upon your shell, you can do control R, and it will search back through your history. So if you want the last command that had the word Bob in it, um, you can do com Control R and type Bob and it will find it for you. Um, you can hit Control R again to go back through other commands that had the word Bob in them. Um, that's super fun. Uh, if you want to repeat something you know you've done before, you can use the bang. Bang in Unix means repeat. Uh, dollar sign in Unix means the end of things on the command line. So um, I can do something like, um, some command, and if I do bang dollar sign, it, it takes the last parameter from the previous thing, and it'll put it right there for me. I can do it again. It's very fun. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, is the sprint, and it's all day, and you all should come, no matter if you feel like you aren't going to fit in, or you aren't going to be productive, or you don't know enough. Um, those are all valid feelings, but completely um, not true. Uh, so uh, you should definitely come to the sprint. And one of the cool things that happens is a, at a sprint is you get to sit next to somebody and watch them work, and they get to watch you work, and uh, they will um, see you doing something, and they'll be like, did you know you could do this? And it will like revolutionary, like change your life, and you'll be like super efficient, and you feel really great about it. Um, and especially you can sit next to me. <laughs> I need people to sit next to me so that I can help them do things. Um, and, uh, and I know a lot of things about this. So if you think this is cool, you can totally come sit next to me tomorrow and learn like way more. Okay, so let's do some more things. Uh, so let's, <clears throat> we're gonna make a, a new file and instead of worrying about editors and stuff, we're gonna take some Unix shortcut things. So we're just gonna touch and then you can call it anything you want. And that'll create a file. Uh, if you want to see it, remember if you get confused, type ls, right? So you can see it. If you want to see some more detail about it, you can do ls minus l, which is fun. Uh, so this is just the Unix stuff about what's going on. But what we want to know is we want to know the git stuff. So when we're confused in Unix, you can use print working directory and ls. When you're confused in git and you don't know what to do next, you do git status, right? So you all the time just think, I have no idea what to do, so we type git status. And it will almost always tell you what to do. Git status is really smart. You should read the words that it says. Uh, so now it's telling me, it's noticed that I have some changes. Uh, I have a, a file. It's not tracking any changes in that file. And it's like, uh, hey, you probably don't mean to do that. So we should fix this. Uh, and it says here, use git add to track. So it's telling me what to do next. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to git add. And I want to add this file here. So I could, type the, uh, I could type out the word for the file, but I'll probably make a spelling mistake. Uh, what I could do is start typing the word and hit tab, and it'll auto-complete it for me. That's cool. I could, also, because I could also just git add star, and that'll add everything. And I almost always want to add everything. 
Yeah. Does that work progressively to add stuff? Yes. It does work recursively. Uh, when I'm working on, on Drupal core, um, I usually do something like git add core slash star. So you can use directory paths to like restrict if you want down, but you can also get everything. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right, because sometimes you do only want to pick one thing. And instead of like changing directory down there, I almost always stay working in whatever root I have of my whole entire project. So I end up having a lot of long paths to files. So you're staying paste. Is there a way to pin this without us trying and I'm not able to? Windows copy and paste is um, sometimes difficult. Um, so I mentioned earlier today um, IRC, right? And that uh, two good channels are pound Drupal, because if you're on IRC and you do Drupal, you have to be in pound Drupal. Uh, and that's our community channel where we talk about things out loud in front of everybody, and it's really important to do that. Um, we also have another um, channel, like you get them for different local areas. So like, for example, there's pound Drupal dash Fox Valley. And if we were talking about uh, what we're going to do about lunch and the fact that we ran out of sodas, we would definitely talk about that in the Fox Valley IRC channel. But if we have a question about how to use Git with Drupal core, we're not going to talk about that in the Fox Valley channel because then we're like cutting off people who might be interested in that conversation uh, and also cutting off help from people who can help us. So if it's, definite, if it's anything Drupal, like Drupal related, it's definitely pound Drupal for that. Um, if it's you know something that only like local people, that's like where you can use your local channels for. Uh, so I, if anybody has trouble getting in, um, <gasps> that was weird. Okay, it just turns out I can't show you IRC. Um, I'm gonna do it anyway though. Uh, so IRC, there's a robot. Um, in IRC, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to ask it Windows. And it has a little factoid. Um, and there's uh, another factoid that's linked from this one called Windows Copy and Paste. And so I'm going to ask the bot about that. Um, so uh, if you're in IRC, you can click on these links because you totally should be. Um, and, and get them, but I, there's, um, there's a thing in here about Sigwin, um, turning on quick edit, there's also, I, you do this weird like control shift insert is like your copy and paste instead of control C and control V, uh, sometimes in some command line tools, so. Shift insert. Ah, shift insert. Uh, right. So, um, right. So, what we've done uh, is we've done a git command. We've done git add, right? And we don't know what to do next, so we just do git status, and git status will tell us what to do next. So we don't even like need to like pr read the slides essentially, but it's on the slides. So we're going to do git status, and this is how I know whether or not the command I just typed worked. I got a different result this time. So um, it's going to say changes to be committed. Uh, if I don't want to commit these things, it tells me how I can uh, unstage them. So it's tracking these. Um, I want to commit them, so we're going to do a commit. Um, we're going to git commit minus m, and then inside double quotes, we're going to write whatever we want. So the Unix command is. Uh, git, and the rest of the things on the command line are arguments. The first argument is a command for git, so it's like git is like a shell inside a shell kind of a thing. Uh, and so the git command that I'm doing is a, I'm committing, and it has options. So options uh, start with dashes, change the way that commands run. So I'm changing the way the commit command is going to run. And there are usually other options you can use. So if you want your commit to work slightly different, you just look up the manual page and you see what other kind of options you can give to the git commit command. The minus m option says that I'm going to specify my commit message right here on the command line. Please don't put me in an editor in VI that I have to figure out how to edit in and get out. So that's why we do this, okay? 
Uh, and the minus m option takes an argument. And the argument there is in um, double quotes. And you don't have to use the double quotes. You use the double quotes when you have a space. Because on the Unix command line, spaces separate arguments. So I don't mean, if I don't have the quotes, the Unix command line is going to think that the argument to minus m is initial. And then it's going to think that commit is another argument to the git commit command. So that's why we need the quotes. Uh, because I wanted to treat this thing as an entire string. <clears throat> so then we do something, right? So then we're going to do git status. And it's going to tell me nothing. <laughs> it's going to be like, everything's cool. And you're like, whoa, how do I know what I've done? Right? History, like, you know, I want to know something. Um, and that's git log. Git log will list all of your commit messages. If you want to know specifically what was done in, oh, so this is a commit message thing here. This is a commit. The bits here, um, this long number of weird things, that's called the commit hash. It's a unique identifier for each commit that you've done. Uh, I usually end up copying and pasting them. Uh, but you, can, you don't have to. Um, use the whole thing. You just have to use enough initial characters to make it unique. So like five or six initial characters. So if you want to look and type, you can do that. If you want to highlight just the first whatevers, you can do that. But I find it e easier target to just double click and then copy the whole thing. Uh, so that's your commit hash. Um, you can do things like you can actually see what changes were involved with this with the show. So git show and then the hash, uh, it'll tell you what you've done. So this is telling me that the only thing I did was I added a new file, and it was called anything, because that's what I did. You want to make a lot of commits. Uh, don't worry about committing something that's broken, half working, that was a terrible idea. Work for a while. When you've got it kind of something going on, make a commit. And in your commit message, write down why you did that change. You don't have to write down what change you did, because we can use git show to see what we did. So in my commit message, I'm not going to say, like, I made a new file called anything.txt. That's <laughs> repetitive, because git knows what I did. What I need to know is why I did it, um, what I was trying to do, what I was trying to fix. Uh, what documentation I was looking at that told me that this would be a good thing to try. Those are the things later uh, in the day, next month, next year, that I'm going to want to know again. I don't need to know what I did. That's all stored in the computer. Um, if you make a bad commit message, you can uh, amend it. So don't worry about doing things perfectly at the same time. We can try this one out. This is uh, git commit, so it's the same git command. Um, but I'm going to change the way commit works, giving it another <coughs> option, um, mend. A lot of times in Git and also in Unix in general, um, there are short ways to type things and also long ways to type things that accomplish the same thing. So you might be able to use a minus V to get your version, or you might be able to use minus minus version and spell it all out. And sometimes it's easier to remember the long ones than the short ones, and sometimes the other way around. So uh, a lot of times you'll see that there's, there's multiple ways of doing the same thing. That doesn't mean the way that you're doing it is wrong. So just pick whichever way you like, as long as it works. Um, so I'm going to change the commit message. Status won't tell me that anything's changed. I can do git log again, though. And now I have a different commit message on that same commit. All right, so let's do some other things. Uh, and you can do whatever you'd like. You can edit this. You can add new files. Uh, let's make another file. I'm going to um, make another file. I use VI, so I can just, you can use nano if you want to do um, non-VI command line editor. That's N-A-N-O. Uh, or you can use like Sublime or Notepad or, wh or whatever you want.
So I'm going to put some words in the file. To get out of VI after you make, uh, to get in, when you get into VI, if you want to do something, you do I for insert, then you can type things. When you're done typing, you hit escape to stop, and then you can issue commands to VI. And the command you want to get out of that is colon WQ to write and quit out of that. Uh, so now um, I've done something, and I don't know what to do with git. I'm going to do git status. It's going to tell me I have a new file. This is different than what I see when I do a ls. ls is going to give me the actual thing, the status of my machine. So it's going to tell me I have two files. Git doesn't care that I have two files. I only care about my changes with git. So when I do git status, I know what the changes are. So it tells me I have a new file, and I can add it. So I'll do that, git add. It'll t after I add it, it'll say that I have changes to be committed, so I'll commit them. Uh, and after I do um, anything, I'm going to do git status, so now I'm all clean. Now if I do a git log now, I'll see I have two commits. Uh, git log minus one tells me just one of them. And so it's kind of nice to be able to say how many you want to see, especially when you're working on a project where there's like 500 git commit messages and you just want to see like the last three. So that's uh, something I use a lot. <coughs> All right, if I um, make another change, so maybe I will. Yeah. So in VI, hit escape just once, like just hit it and let go. And then colon, the dot, dot. So you have to hold the shift and the key down, colon. And then let go of all your keys and then hit one W and one Q and then hit enter. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to make some more changes. All right, um, and then at any time um, when you're not clean and you want to see what changes you've made so far, you can do a git diff. So git diff is going to be only your changes that are not staged or committed. So even though I made a lot of changes today, right? I made a file, I made another file, I put some words in one file, I put some words in another. The changes since I've made my last commit is only this one. So I use git diff a lot. The way that I'll work is uh, I'll do some things in Unix and I'll do some things in PHP Storm. And when I think I have things working in PHP Storm, instead of just like adding all my changes and committing them right away, I always look at my git diff. Because a lot of times I'll have accidentally changed something or I'll have left a debug statement in there I forgot about and I didn't remember where it was. And so I always look at all the lines of my git diff. And I want to make sure here that I don't have any unintentional changes. So like, for example, if I had done something like, if I meant to add these words to anything, and for some reason, uh, I didn't intend to change anything in new file. When I look at my git diff, it's going to be like, whoa, did you really mean to do this? And most likely I did not, right? I did not mean to add a space at the end of this line. And if I add this and commit this and push this out to the rest of my team, that's noise that they don't need to be seeing. So any kind of like, you never want to change anything, you don't have to change in order to get your feature to work that you're working on. You only change what you have to change. And you don't reformat things. You don't leave white space changes in. Those are all really bad noise things and will not be good down the line. Uh, and one of the reasons is because uh, if this line ends up needing to change in the future and I want to see what the different things it's been through in the past, I'm going to say, show me all the changes that has ever happened to this line. I don't want to see this change in that list because it wasn't a real change. Uh, so I don't want to um, 
I don't want to commit this. So I could go in my editor and like hit undo, right? Um, or I can use git. So somewhere in these slides, uh, patch file. We'll come back to that. Um, well, oh, we'll get to it eventually. Uh, so to undo changes, this is super nice. Um, I can do git status, and it will tell me here how to undo changes. So it says git checkout minus minus, and then the file name to discard any changes in your working directory. And I'm like, that's what I want. I want to not have this change to this new file.txt here. So I'm going to do git checkout minus minus, and then the file name that I want, new file. And then I do a git diff, and I can see, ah, whew, it put it back to what it last had it in its little git memory, and now I have just the change that I want. Now this is what I'm going to commit. So then I do git add. I'll add everything because everything is exactly what I want. And then I'll commit it. All right, so git status, git diff. Um, when you're working in the issue queues, we don't have full git integration, so I don't like have a pull request that I do. So the way we do changes is uh, with patch files. When you do your git diff, that's your patch file. So you just redirect git diff into a file name that has .patch on the end of it. Uh, and we can do that later today. We can do that all day tomorrow. Uh, right. Yep, that's how to make a patch. OK, <clears throat> so you, you might find when you um, are doing your git status that you are, it's showing you more changes than I'm seeing when I'm doing uh, my git statuses here. Or eventually, uh, when you do it in actual Drupal um, clone, a repository that you've cloned, you'll get things um, like, for example, Uh, if you do touch something dot patch, or you do touch uh, where, um, this tilde, I think, and then you do a ls, um, you'll see I have four files here. Uh, when I do git status. It's not going to tell me that I have changes in this something.patch and this, this tilde. So there's uh, file types that you don't care about tracking in Git ever. And what you want to do is tell Git to ignore them. Uh, so you want to set up a, a dot .git ignore. Uh, you probably want a dot .git ignore for each project that you're working on that's project specific. But you'll also have uh, global things that you just always want to ignore. So always ignore file names that end in tilde, because those are made, those are temporary backup files your editor makes. Um, I never want to track a patch file in my Git repo. I always want to ignore them. I don't want to make a patch and accidentally include a patch in my patch. Like that's not right. Um, so let's make a uh, dot git ignore, and you can put something in there. Uh, whatever kind of pattern that might be showing up when you do a git status. Um, so if you're on a Mac, you'll see, um, like, uh, sometimes git will tell you that, hey, you've got a new file there, DS store, because the little finder application in Mac makes these DS store things in every single directory. And you don't want git tracking that, because the other people on your team are not going to have the same ones, so you don't want to see what changes in them, and they don't have Macs. So the, you don't want those in your git repo. So anything like this, uh, you want to set up in your dot git ignore. Um, project specific dot git ignore things, you probably do want to know about those for those projects. So um, sometimes it's a pretty common pattern to have your dot git ignore tracked by git, so that when you have to add a certain file type to your git ignore, 
you commit that to the repo, and people who get your changes will also get that improvement to their .get ignore, because usually those are project specific. Anything that's just you personally, like what the stuff you want to ignore, that probably goes in your global uh, git ignore. Um, so if you want to see a sample, um, you can see my .git ignore. This is my global one. Uh, and it's a tinyurl.com slash yesctignore if you want to see what, um, what mine looks like. OK, so one of the um, very common patterns to use with Git is to kind of keep the different things that you're trying to change about your project separate uh, and to do those on branches. So if I have like a feature list, I'll probably have a branch for each feature. Um, so maybe I want to like work on the theme for this. So I would do something to make a new branch. Um, I could do git branch and then the name of the branch that I want to create. Um, and then after that, I would have to tell git that I want to work in that branch to change to it. And so I would have to check out that branch. And nobody does that uh, because you are almost always doing those two things together. You do them all at once and you do git check out. Uh, but the thing you want to check out doesn't exist yet, so you tell checkout, hey, if I give you a name here and you, there's nothing named that, please make me a branch. So that's why it's minus B. You're telling checkout to make you a branch and give it a name. Uh, so I'm going to call it um, snazzy. Uh, so now I have a new branch. Um, Get status. We want to do a lot of get statuses. Uh, if I want to see all my branches, get branch. Uh, git branch will list all my branches. Star tells me which branch I'm on. If I want to switch to another branch, I just check it out. So I can git check out master. And now I'm on the other branch. If I do git branch, I can double check that. I can see the star is next to the word master. Uh, so let's go into snazzy. So I'm going to git check out snazzy. And I'm going to do a git status. Make sure I'm there. I'm going to do a git branch. And make sure I'm where I think I am. Uh, so now I can do some changes. Uh, maybe I'm going to um, add, like tell the thing that I have a new theme. So I'm going to edit a file and do something slightly Drupal-like and say theme snazzy. Uh, and I'm also going to get my new theme. So I'm going to make a new theme. All right. <clears throat> so I can get status and see what things I've done. So I made a change to new file, and I also have an untracked file. So I want to see what these changes were, then I want to do git diff. So I do git status a lot and git diff a lot. Those are definitely things that um, are gonna, you're going to be doing all the time. Git diff is nice because it shows me exactly what I've done. Um, these all look good. So maybe I'll add them, git add everything. Ah, here's um, sometimes um, it, your pattern will match things that you ignore. Uh, so you have to be a little bit more specific with your pattern. Uh, uh, So I'm going to tell it to just add everything that ends in .text and .theme, because that gets all my stuff. Uh, now I can see that I've added just those two things. If I want to make sure what, um, what happens is after you add things and you run a git diff, there's no difference, because it diffs against what, you've, uh, what you think you're going to commit. Uh, but you can see what that is. You can do git diff and change the way diff works by saying, 
show me the staged things or the cached things. Uh, and then you can still make sure that the changes that you're getting are the ones you want. So I can see I have these changes. I've got a new file and a modified file. And what I want to do is commit them. So I'm going to commit them. Git commit. And then I get status to make sure everything is cool. Git log can tell you all the things. All right. And I am on um, my snazzy branch. So I can have a lot of little tiny commits on this branch and understand like what I'm doing. I can undo things. When I have it all working, what I want to do is I want to uh, merge it with the main work from that other people may have been done and see if there's any conflicts with other stuff. So what I'm uh, going to do is probably I'm going to switch branches. So I'm going to get branch to master. Uh, oh, because I check out. Git check out. <laughs> master. Uh, so now I'm on master. Git branch will tell me that I'm on master. If I want to um, make sure that nobody else has done anything, I need to get changes from the rest of my team. Uh, pull. Git pull. And I always rebase when I pull. Um, I'm not working with a team, like because I initted this, right? And you've all initted it, and we don't have a remote. Um, so. Uh, this is something that you'll do when you're working with a team, but doesn't really make sense for our example right now. Uh, but you would do a poll to get all the new changes. Uh, and then um, what you'll do is when you get the new changes, you want to merge the two branches. Um, so we can do git merge snazzy. And then uh, if there have been any changes to the work that everybody else is doing that conflicts with any of the changes I was trying to make, I will see it. And it's really great at identifying those things. And so you don't have to be so scared that the thing you're doing is going to mess up something that somebody else has done, because it will tell you. Um, so that's really good. OK. Yeah. What, um, what is rebase tag? What does that stand for? So, um, Let's say I'm working on a team and other people have made changes, right? And I'm working on a branch and I've made changes. Those changes may have happened like sometimes today, sometimes tomorrow, like at different times and things, right? Um, rebase, what it does is it takes all of my changes and it sticks them all together and it won't integrate them with the changes from, from master. What it does is it gets all the changes from master first and then puts my changes on top of them. It will almost never hurt to, to use this and will very rarely hurt not to. So I just always use it. Right, so you don't have any remote set up. So you can do git uh, remote minus v, and it'll tell you what your remotes are, and then you don't have any. Um, you, if you create a repository locally, and then you want to connect to a remote, there's git remote add or git remote something. You can Google and find out what those are. I never remember them, because I, do really, I don't do them very often. Okay. It's much more common to have a remote when you're cl initially cloning something instead of knitting it. Yeah. So uh, if you go on to GitHub and you want to use a package, uh, what you'll do is you'll copy their clone command and you'll run the clone. And then you'll automatically be hooked up to that remote. Or if you go to the Drupal.org project page and you go to the version control thing and you use that git clone command, then you're already hooked up to the Drupal.org remote. So then you'll have something to pull against. Yeah? Let's, uh, yes, please. Uh, about two weeks ago, I was working on a project, and I had my own branch. I was the only one working on that branch. And I was pulling and committing and pulling and committing and pulling and committing. And what happened was the master branch got updated. And I was pulling and committing and pulling and committing. And then when they went to merge, I was working from this code from a month ago, and the whole project was just gone. Whereas if I had been rebasing, it would have come together. Yeah. 
Well, I was going to my branch. Yeah. That's where I'm at. So. Oh, okay, okay. So that's the idea. So if you're working on like another branch, yeah. like without the development. Right. You d then you want to you want to rebase. Uh, so, um, let's see, um, what we've done so far, right? So if you, if you were unable to install Git, please do not leave the camp without Git installed, all right? Like find somebody at lunch, find me, something. We need to get you set up with Git. Um, and that can be something that we really make sure happens for you. Um, if you have any questions, like you have a, like you've been using Git for a project and it's like confusing you, you don't know what to do, like ask somebody. We're filled with people here who use it and know it. Um, so, you know, get your own question answered, even if it seems like a complicated thing. You won't be bothering anybody by asking people questions here. Um, there's m a few more, like, things to talk about uh, that are in the slides. You can read them later or ask me about them later, but what'll happen is you'll naturally start figuring out what they are, either because you'll be working on a team that uses it and you'll share each other, or because you'll start using Google to figure out how to do things with Git. There's some really nice uh, tutorials also. Uh, so there is a slide at the end here, uh, which has resources. Um, these are really good uh, resources, and this is not the page. Uh, so there we go. Um, especially if you're working on issues, um, in these documentation pages about how to use inner diffs with the Drupal.org issue queue Git workflow are really nice. Um, and you can read them and see like use cases for like when do you make a branch and when do you not? When do you just stage changes and when do you commit them? Like you'll see some different things in here for how to do them. Uh, and if anybody has any feedback or more questions, um, I'm YesCT on Twitter and also in IRC and my Drupal.org username, YesCT, and there's a contact form there also. So that's it. Um, thanks. I'm really glad you guys were here and you played along.